Welcome. This video will explore org migration best practices when you need to either merge together or split apart one or more orgs. There are many reasons why an org merge or org split may be necessary. These can include org sprawl. You may need to consolidate multiple orgs if they were created for a purpose that no longer applies. Efficiency. Consolidating orgs can improve collaboration and process standardization and reduce admin effort. Growth and complexity. You may need to split orgs if they're too large and difficult to manage, which also slows the development life cycle. Autonomy and technical debt. You can spin off a business unit into its own discrete org to increase autonomy and better manage technical debt. Based on our experience conducting many org migrations, in this video, we'll share our best practices in five key areas. Project management, metadata and data, integrated applications, org merge, and org split. Let's start with project management. Here are eight key project management tasks to keep in mind when you begin. First, you'll want to follow a standard project plan for success. Second, make sure you have a realistic project timeline. Third, engage executive sponsors early on and identify a project manager. Also consider Salesforce services or partner involvement to increase project success. Next, have a formal communication plan. You'll want to communicate weeks in advance to impacted users. Fifth, allow sufficient time to test. Metadata and data migrations need to be tested and timed to estimate any outage windows during cutover. Sixth, staff the cutover team appropriately based on the scale and duration of the project. Seventh, you should plan to lock out users for maintenance windows. Consider changing profiles with restricted login hours instead of deactivating. Last, request additional courtesy licenses on required orgs for the migration efforts. Now let's go over some key decisions that will help you create a clear project plan. Start by deciding on necessary resources. Your project team can include sponsors, managers, architects, data analysts, integration SMEs, developers, administrators, and even end users. These roles can be filled in-house or with partners. You'll also want to decide on a gradual migration or a big bang approach. Salesforce usually recommends a big bang approach in most instances to ensure clean cutover and avoid confusion when importing data. Next, consider your change management strategy by asking the following questions. Outage window planning. How will you know how long it will take? Communication. How will you communicate your project plan? Org merges and splits are high visibility with direct impact on users. Training. What will be different for the new org and existing users? For your testing strategy, plan for testing and rehearsal of the migration in a sandbox. You should identify a number of test plans based on real business scenarios. You'll also want to test the metadata and the full data load separately, which we'll outline later in this video. When it comes to org migrations, let's acknowledge upfront that something may get overlooked and it may not be discovered until days later. Every member of your team will not be aware of every nuance in the configurations. After all, it took years to build. The risk of user disruption increases with the number of people making changes to the configuration and importing data and the amount of customization in both orgs. You can minimize disruption by ensuring the right people with the necessary experience are doing the right tasks, communicating appropriately within the team as well as to the end users. Plan and communicate outage windows to users and keep them up to date regarding any changes or delays. And planning for post cutover cleanup as users find issues. Remember to keep backups and maintain org IDs, which we will discuss more in a bit. When it comes to migrating data, it's important to know that not all data is migrated equally. Here are six key lessons about org migrations and what happens with different data types. First, be sure that you store legacy IDs in the new system. Legacy IDs are old ID fields in the previous org. To keep them, you'll need to store them in a custom field. You can preserve record creation dates by opening system audit fields through contacting Salesforce support. One way to store history data, field history trail, 
is to create new custom objects. You'll want to plan testing time for large text field extractions. Use your communication plan to inform users that personal data, reports, activities, email templates will not migrate. Finally, think about carefully tracking data that you're going to migrate. What data needs to be migrated, what has already been migrated, and what still needs to be migrated. Tools to migrate metadata. First, consider converting to XML, which can be easily manipulated before a migration. Some useful tools include Salesforce Developer Experience, the command line interface, and others such as Field Trip, Metadata Search, and VS Code. Note that there are some unsupported metadata types, and these will require manual migration. For a complete list of metadata types and where they're supported, see the article Metadata Coverage on developer.salesforce.com. Before an org migration, it's important to consider your integrated applications. Here are some key actions to take. Review and document integrated applications that will need to be migrated. Have tight vendor coordination on third-party apps. Consider turning off integrations and automation during the data load. The Heroku Switch tool is a useful option to turn automation off and on easily. Be sure that you've updated any of your AppExchange apps and that they're on their current versions before reinstalling in the new org. Also make sure to test the user impact for Salesforce apps. Some of these include the Salesforce mobile app, Lightning for Outlook and Gmail, Salesforce Inbox, Files, and so on. As an admin, you'll need to consider some important questions if you're going to combine orgs. First, which org should you keep? This is a big decision. Typically, customers keep the largest org, the one with the most configuration and data. But the smallest org has the least amount of technical debt and gives businesses a chance to refresh. However, the largest org could cost the most to migrate. Keep in mind, starting with a brand new org is also a possibility. Second, do you need everything from both orgs or just select business processes? Complete a review of both systems, looking for similarities, gaps, and obsolete processes. Only move what you need. Don't saddle yourself with additional technical debt. Third, how are you going to handle duplicate accounts and other duplicate data? You will need to merge this data. This can have other implications, such as account ownership in the merged org. And finally, remember to stay within configuration governor limits when merging. Here's an example architecture approach for an org merge. First, extract the data from org 2. Develop data transformation and data load scripts. It's recommended to script the process, as several tests may be needed before production load. Second, create a sandbox from Org 1 to test merging. Third, migrate the metadata from Org 2 to Org 1 sandbox. Fourth, test the data load into the Org 1 sandbox. Fifth, migrate the metadata from the Org 1 sandbox to Org 1 production. Finally, migrate the data to Org 1 production. And here is an example of an org merge project flow. Keep in mind, your process may differ depending on available resources, complexity, or scale of the project. You may also need to iteratively perform some of these steps. Let's review org splits and some key questions to ask. For an org split, do you need everything from both orgs or just select business processes? And is this a full copy of metadata and data or a selective copy? How will record ownership be handled for data that is being moved over without their record owners and users? Will both orgs be on the same edition? If not, document and make sure you're aware of the differences in functionality and limits. Is there a full sandbox that can be leveraged for the split? Can one be acquired on a temporary basis? Check with your account team. A full sandbox can be used as a gold copy of the metadata and data that is to be migrated to the newly created org. This reduces impact on existing production orgs during the split migration activities. Finally, how will your governance model be updated to handle multiple orgs? When it comes to replicating your org, 
It's important to remember that replicating your org is not a database copy or simple file system operation. You cannot just duplicate the bits and namespace directly with no platform or application structure. It is a complicated logistics exercise and needs careful ground-up orchestration and sequencing. Let's take a look at a sample org split approach. First, extract the data from production. Develop data transformation and data load scripts. It's recommended to script the process as several tests may be needed before final load. Second, create a sandbox from production to use for split activity and update metadata as needed. Third, request a new production org and create a sandbox for testing the split. Fourth, migrate metadata from the sandbox of the existing org to the sandbox of the new org. Fifth, test data load into the sandbox for the new org. Sixth, migrate metadata from sandbox to new production org. And finally, load the data into the new production org. Here is another example of a project flow, this time for an org split. Now that you've learned key practices to help you prepare your migration, consult this high-level checklist. Once completed, you're ready to get to work. For more information and detailed guides, check out help.salesforce.com or visit us on the trail at trailhead.salesforce.com. Thanks for watching.